The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow, he knows not how. Of its own accord, the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear, and when the grain is ripe, he wields the shekel at once, for the harvest has come. He said, To what shall we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed that when it is sown in the ground, it is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parable, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them. But to his own disciple, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You all know the saying that you must guard your thoughts because your thoughts will become your words. And your words will become your actions. Your actions will become your habit. Your habit will become your character. Your character will become your destiny. My dear friends, my brothers and sisters, they say everything begins in your mind. But today, I say to you, guard your eyes. Guard your eyes because what you see is the things that your mind will process. Let us look at the first reading. David com com committed the sin not only of adultery by sleeping to a woman whose name was Bathsheba, and knowing that she was pregnant and cannot find a way to justify it, he killed the husband Uriah. How did it happen? Simply by not guarding his eyes. Nagsimula lang yan kung saan marahil siya nagpapahangin is strolling about the roof of the palace. From the roof, he saw a woman batting who was very beautiful. Nakita niya may naliligo. Maganda. Kaya, tiningnan uli. Hindi po ba, ano? Tayo, sabi nga nila, we are attracted with three things. What is beautiful, Second, what is delicious. Third, what is dangerous. Pag napapansin nyo, pag maganda, talagang napapalingon kayo. Pag nakita yung menu ng, ng, ng restaurant, napapalingon kayo. Hindi po ba? Tinitingnan mo kagad magkano kaya ito. Hindi po ba? No? Pero pag ikaw ay nasa bingit ng, ng sabi nga, ng disgrasya, you are agitated. Mga minamahal na mga kapatid, a psychologist have said this, that sin do not happen without processing it. Without processing it. You committed the sin because you decided to commit it. Look at the process. 
First, there was a preoccupation of the mind. Second, you ritualize it. Third, you act on it. Fourth, you become guilty. Preoccupation of the mind. Kung hindi nakita ni David ang babaeng naliligo, kaya nga ang pangalan nun, Bathsheba. The woman taking a bat. Di pa ba, no? Para madaling tandaan. Kung hindi niya tinakita yon, kung hindi niya pinagtuunan yun ng pansin, it will not be a pre preoccupation of the mind. Pero hindi niya binantayan ang kanyang mga mata. It became a preoccupation of the mind. Then he ritualized it. How? Paano niya makikilala? Pinaki, pinasundo niya. At doon nangyari ang mga bagay na hindi dapat mangyari. At nagbuntis. Ngayon, ayaw mong panagkutan kasi nahihiya kang ikaw hayari. Paano? Pakasalan mo kaya lang may asawa, patayin mo ang asawa. There was a preoccupation of the mind. There was a ritualization. You ritualize it, then you commit the sin. Now you are guilty. And the moment you become guilty, then it becomes another preoccupation of the mind. My dear friends, my brothers and sisters, look at your sin. Did it happen overnight? No. No, it did not. But the opposite is also true. The opposite is also true. If you want to be holy, you guard your eyes so that what you see, you know that it can preoccupy your mind. If what is good becomes the pre preoccupation of your mind, then you ritualize it. How can I put it into practice? Then you do it. Then after, again, it becomes a preoccupation of the mind because you experience God's blessing. My brothers and sisters, what is St. John Bosco taught us in his many words and one of them with regard to sin? With regard to sin, he said, never make excuses about your sin. Never make excuses about your sin. When you sin, correct it. Yun ang magandang payo na santo. What makes evil or what makes sin more evil is when we try to justify our sinfulness. What makes sin more evil is when we try to justify our sinfulness. Butana humirit pa. My brothers and sisters, let us learn from St. John Bosco that when we learn about our sin, let us not make excuses, but let us correct it.